Well, as we continue our countdown to the Oscars, we celebrate movies as an outlet to relax and be entertained. But for one Sonoma County astronomer, some movies aren't always entertaining. This astronomer is Phil Plate. Uh, he's working for NASA to try to educate people about astronomy. As News 10's Jane McCarthy reports, he believes that some science fiction movies are making his job more difficult. But here you see this thing blowing up, and it's they've, they've planted this bomb 800 feet deep. When Phil Plate watches a movie, he's focused on the stars. Right here, that's rain. It's raining on an airless asteroid. That's a good trick. It's not Bruce Willis type stars, but rather the astronomy that Plate has his eyes on. This movie can just jam so much bad astronomy into one scene. It's, it's amazing. He is a doctor of astronomy and makes it his mission to point out scientific errors in films. When somebody brags about how accurate their movie is, then, you know, they're, they're asking for it. So, Plate answers with a write-up on his website, aptly named Bad Astronomy, which reminds me. The opinions expressed in this segment are not those of the station, but they should be. Yes, he has his opinions. Now, Mission to Mars was a, an awful, awful movie. In Mission to Mars, aliens create human life. There's no way the aliens could have done this. And, um... And evidently the aliens are unhappy that I said that. Well, we fixed the light and moved on to the core. In this film, the Earth's magnetic field has shut down, unleashing deadly microwaves. These microwaves get through all the time anyway, and they're not that strong. They're certainly not strong enough to, like, you know, toast this guy like it is right there. It wouldn't boil the water. It wouldn't fry the Golden Gate Bridge like this movie did. Then there's Armageddon, depicting a deadly asteroid hurtling toward Earth. And the idea is that a giant asteroid the size of Texas is going to hit the Earth, and they only discover it 18 days before it's going to hit. Right away, that's ridiculous. There are no asteroids that big. We would have seen them 100 years ago. For most of us, science fiction is just that. It's fiction. But Dr. Plate believes we should all know more about the solar system in which we live and he believes movies could help that process. While the movies are under no obligation to teach good science, I, I have no problems with that, it still would be cool to see good science in the movies. In fact, Plate says he'd love to be an advisor for a film, but he thinks there's a good chance he'd be booted from the writer's circle. That jerk, you know. We can do whatever we want with this comet. It's like, no, you can't. The tail's got to go this way. You know, so I'd probably get in a lot of trouble. But... Maybe he'd better stick with his website. In Sonoma County, Jane McCarthy, News 10. We like this, Dr. <laughs> Phil. That was, uh, that was very interesting. It was. Uh, he says that there are some movies that actually do a relatively good job of using science, including the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, Deep Impact, and of all things, Men in Black. And we're really afraid to know what scenes in that movie are scientifically <laughs> accurate, but uh, that's Dr. Phil. Some unusual Dr. aliens in that one, I remember.